This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. everybody how are you this is alex bennett and this is the ramble we go till midnight eastern daylight time and uh we're gonna have a citizens panel in about a half hour from right now well 25 minutes from right now but right now we got to talk to one of our old friends once again it's time for the recitation lighten up everyone the old rube is back well it's kind of like it but i like doing it more like lighten up everybody the old rubes here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you Although get... my pipes are, I don't know if you, do, do I sound all right? My pipes are shot, man. I've been doing a lot of uh, Shakespeare in the park. Yeah. Uh, at least I think I have. You know, there's a fine line between Shakespeare in the park and homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> so don't look too closely. Yeah, yeah. All those bums doing Shakespeare in the park. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, man, they're out there yelling. They're all yelling at each other. So, so it's a very dramatic something. Very dramatic's happening on. Just dress them in tights and put them in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, how do people? Uh, how are people able to tell the difference between you and a homeless person? Because you have a certain je ne sais quoi that says, they really "I don't have a, I don't have a place to live." They really can't. When I walk around Hollywood, they just like turn away because they're afraid I'm going to ask them for change. So I don't know, man. I got to walk faster, I guess. And make I, make it look like I have an agenda, you know, some place to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but you can't walk anywhere in Hollywood. You, I mean, you you could go out for a walk in Hollywood every day, and I live right in in the heart of Hollywood. And uh, you could go out for a walk every day, and there's somebody screaming, not at you, not at anyone, just screaming, man. And it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. Well, uh, there are those street screamers, and I've always had a great problem with them. And let me explain the problem to you, if I may. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to become one of them someday. Uh, it's a de- definite, distinct possibility. Because, uh, uh, like one day, I just found myself uh, 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 years ago, a couple of years ago, on a street corner, really mad at something and screaming. And I went, uh oh. Uh oh, maybe they're going to mistake me for one of those people, and so I've always been—I haven't been as ill-tempered. <laughs> hey, what, uh, what were you screaming about? Do you remember? I can't remember, you know. But I was just—you know—I used to have a real temper. Um, I could really go. I, you probably never were around when I blew my stack. Or no, maybe, huh? maybe you were. I don't know. No, but, I never saw you blow your stack. But but I could, and and as the years have gone on, I've become better at it. When I was working in San Francisco, I I had a huge temper on a private level, and uh, it you know I would I would just get upset by the by by nothing in particular. It was just it was my life was full of pressure, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's terrible to have a. I would rather have not had the show be as big a hit as it was because then you can kind of maintain less of a hit and not have the pressure on you. That's how I look at it. You know, yeah, right. But no, no, but I mean, you get what I'm saying? No, it was a huge hit. Yeah. In other words, if I just had a moderate hit, you can maintain that and there's no sweat. And if you go up, okay, hey, you went up, yippee. If you go down, they go, well, that's the breaks of the game. But if you're number one, okay, you've got to maintain that. Yeah. The pressure is extraordinary. And, and in radio, once every week, uh, two, once every month, the ratings would come out. And we'd all be crowded around like a, like a, a computer readout as, as it, the, the ratings started coming in. And you'd see all the radio stations in alphabetical order. And we'd be looking at the morning ratings coming in as it's typing itself out. And finally, you see, you know, Live 105, which was uh, KQ. Well, no, what was it? It wasn't KQIK. It was uh, what, uh, KITS. 
And you, you know, you'd see K this, K that, K I T S. You see it typing out, and then you see that number come out. And after that number comes out, you either feel really good or you feel like shit. Yeah. You know, and it's terrible. It's just a terrible way to live. That you're, you know, that I'm not being judged um, by, by the station, at least, on my quality and the quality of what I was doing. I, it's based upon how much money I could make them. Yeah, that numbers thing is a lot of pressure, man. I remember when I was gambling away the rent money at the craps table. Yeah, that's terrible. You'd wait for that number to come up. If it was a bad number, you lose everything. If it was a good number, you play on. <laughs> you play on. You never knew when to quit, though, right? No, I, I never did. <laughs> Were you bad at gambling? No, I no, I don't think anybody enjoyed it more than I did. Uh, really? See, I I. I was a good poker player. I was a good card player, but I I didn't really play poker that much because I found it very boring. Why was it boring? It's just too slow, and you know, and then you're just sitting there with a group of people you don't even care about. But uh, I like going. You know, when I go to Reno or Tahoe back when I lived up there and uh, lived up in San Francisco, you know, I like to play dice because it's action, man. You shake the dice and you throw them out. And uh, blackjack was fun and video poker. You, video- yeah, I remember you liked video poker, didn't you? You were really <laughs> big on video poker. I had another I'm- friend who was very big on video poker, too. Yeah, I loved video poker. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, but you're playing against a machine. I know. Yeah. See, I but don't. You get, free, you get free drinks. You just sit there. It's you and the machine and booze and money and you and the machine and cigarettes. And- What's the most you ever won gambling at one shot? Uh, probably about $9,000. Really? Yeah, I, I hit two uh, Royal Flushes on one trip. Really? Oh, wow. I can only. Well, I, I can I, I, I went back later. I don't mean later in the day. I went back, you know, like probably two months later. And what money I had left, I had like a couple thousand dollars left. Uh, and I lost all of that. Wow. Well, you see, I, 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 the most I ever won was about $2,500. That's good. Uh, Betting on the ponies? Huh? No. Betting on the no, ponies? I was, I was, believe it or not, okay, hang on to your seat. I was playing a slot machine. <laughs> See, for the most part, I played slot machines. Here, first, let me tell you why I don't gamble. Is because if you're a gambler, you get as much of a thrill losing as you do winning. You get a bit. You get a bigger thrill. Winning. Winning means almost nothing. It's twisted. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like to lose. I losing money by, you know putting it on a table somewhere and having somebody take it away from me, it, it would be devastating to my personal well-being, okay? Would drive even if me you're getting the free cocktails? Even, I don't drink. <laughs> so I, I don't even have that advantage. Uh. Yeah. So anyway, so um, I have never been a gambler for that reason because the thrill of lo- of winning is not, is 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 not a compensation from the absolute depression I get from losing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I was right there. Yeah. So, uh, but this one time, but so I used to play the slot machines because I knew I could control that. I could say, okay, I just lost a thousand uh, hundred dollars. Goodbye, and I walk away from it. Yeah. And and if you go to a crap table, there's a lot of pressure there. You know, really a lot of pressure. And I used to kind of like roulette, but there's a lot of pressure there, too. And it, yeah. you, you lose your money faster at roulette than just about anything. Yep. You know, so uh, but so I, I played the slot. So I was playing the slot one night, and one night I did $2,000. You hit a you hit a jackpot for 2000 I hit a jackpot or something and got 2000 So All I right. took the 2000 I took 500 of the 2000 and walked into the high stakes slot machines. You know the ones that are like twenty five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Fifty dollars slot machines, and I won another five hundred dollars there. It just happened to be a day for me to win at slot machines. 
Yeah, that's cool. And I walked away with 2500 But that was the most I ever did because I was never really that much of a gambler. You know, so I had a, I had a friend, uh, Paul, who's since dead, who was the head of Play Incorporated, and he used to love to gamble. He, You know, and he had the money. He, he made good money, so he had the money to gamble with. And he loved playing video poker. That was his thing, video poker. Yeah, it's fun. You're like the only guy, uh, well, not that I know a lot of people that had a problem with the pipe, but you're like the only guy that ever had a problem with the pipe but didn't drink. A problem with the pipe? The crack pipe. I didn't do crack. Never well, who did. Who am I thinking of then? then? Certainly not me. I never did crack. Well, who am I thinking of? I don't know. What, you knew somebody who did crack? No, that one that one time you did your show from your bed, you couldn't get out you couldn't get out of bed, remember? No, no, we did the show in my bed. That was the bit we were doing. Oh, I thought it was because you were so fucked up you couldn't get out of bed. No, they don't move a whole radio station into your bedroom when you can't you just say call and say I can't go to work today. Yeah, but you were just really at that uh, period in your life. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with it. Well, I did uh, a lot of co- uh, I did a lot of coke in those days. Yeah, I say at that period of your life, you were very sweaty and afraid of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> and, no. and we did the show in your bedroom because we had to because we loved you, man. No, I did the show in my bedroom, and I even have a picture of it. You. I even have a picture of it with Jerry Springer sitting on the edge of my bed. <laughs> And you remember that guy, you remember Yan Can Cook, the cooking show on PBS? Yeah, he was there, man. He was there cooking breakfast for me. Yeah, he was there the day I was there. Yeah, and then other people would come by and would hop in bed with me, and we did the show from my from That's my. That's what I'm saying, man. You had people come in. Well, your but bed it wasn't because I was on the crack. It was because you were on doing too much blow then. No, there wasn't too much blow. If it was too much blow, I'd be able to get out of bed. Uh, up to a certain point, but then once the paranoia really sets in. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, those were those yeah, days. Yeah, it can't cook, man. Wow, whatever happened to that dude? He's he still wrote- around. I, I Occasionally I see him on television, I think. You know, Martin Yan was his name. And he cooked, and, and, and you know what it is about Chinese food? Let me tell you this. He cooked a Chinese breakfast for us in my kitchen. And he left. And for about three weeks, my kitchen smelled like a Chinese restaurant. Somehow that food just permeated every inch of that kitchen. And finally, the smell went away. It reminded me of the days when I made deliveries for the Chinese Food Express in Marin County. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, were armed, we were armed with a stapler. Now ask me why we were armed with a stapler. Why were you armed with the stapler? Because when we would get in our cars and drive the food over to people, occasionally we'd be a little hungry and we'd open up the bag and take out like something, right? And then we'd staple the bag back up again. Oh, okay, wow. <laughs> and that was in spite of the fact that these guys used to feed us a dinner every night of Chinese food. You know, what do you want? Anything. Do you want some uh, some uh, wonton soup? Do you want some uh, uh, wonton? Do you, what do you, you know, what do you want? Fried yeah, prawns? Yeah. What do you want that? But anything you want, you know, because you're the delivery boys, and here, just take it. No, but in spite of that, back, we felt this, compelled to steal it from the customers as well. Was, was this back during the same time of the when you couldn't get out of your bedroom? No, no, no. This was when I was a kid. And oh, I was okay. growing up in Marin County, and I... I was no longer in high school, and I needed to have a job, so I delivered for a short time for the Chinese Food Express. That's right. You grew up in Marin, man. Lucky you. Lucky me. Yeah. I was one of the few Jews in Marin. Now I know how you... You, you, you know what that's like, because you were one of the few Jews back in the, in the the when you were a hillbilly. That's right. Classic Jew, Billy. There's not a lot of us. A, a classic Jew, Billy, yeah. And I, uh, you know, we, we had... Uh, listen... We, we we were so reformed, our temple was so reformed that we used to have our religious school, you know, that you have that kids go to once a week yeah. on Sunday. <laughs> that's how reformed we uh, were. You know, we didn't have Saturday school. We had Sunday school, just like any other, you know. Yeah. And I would go there, and I think it turned out to be a ruse because I think it was just a con job for us to contribute to the state of Israel. 
Well, they needed trees all the time. They yes. got too much of a boatload on by now. Because when I was a little boy, I remember, you know, they're going to. Going door to door, I'd rather get candy, but no, you have to get money for the trees. Did you ever see, did you ever see, uh, what was it? I think it was Radio Days, uh, uh, in which Woody Allen has uh, the kid, him as a kid, uh, yeah. running around trying to get money for trees for Israel, plant a tree in Israel, and then he takes the money and goes out and buys something with it. And right. when the <laughs> rabbi finds out about it, he's like, you know. Really put back, but anyway, no. So I went to I went to Sunday school to learn all about being a Jew. Wonderful thing. Were you? Yeah, you know what? I went to Sunday school too. Really? Yeah, I couldn't figure out why. Yeah, yeah. Now, were you? Were you bar mitzvahed? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, the career hasn't worked out exactly the way I thought it would, so that ended up being one of my highest paid gigs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because everybody has to come and give you a fountain pen. They cut. Yeah, <laughs> they used to say, you know, the state is saying, ladies and gentlemen, if for bar mitzvah is today, I am a man. That was what you used to yeah. say, and uh, everybody used to say, well, today I am a fountain pen. Yeah, because everybody yeah. would give you a fountain pen. Hey, who wants one? I got shitloads of them. The silver cross pen. Yes. And- that. Yes, those were the great ones to get, and everybody gave you one. Everybody gave, and they one. all dried up. Did you ever notice that they all dried up? And you yeah, could... were, they were very hard to find refills for. Yeah, yeah. What a... I like cold hard cash and BB guns. Yeah, yeah what man. a what a crappy gift, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, well. Anyway, that's the worst gift, man. If you know somebody's being bar mitzvah, give them a BB gun or. Uh, Cash. Now, for your bar mitzvah, did you have to learn Hebrew? Yeah, man. I studied with the rabbi for months. I did, learn- too. And I didn't learn anything. And instead, they... I don't know. How do we do it? They kind of whispered the words in my ear <laughs> while I was trying to oh, read from... You know what? You, because it, for people it. who don't know what a bar mitzvah is, it's the it's the rite of passage from boy to man at 13, Okay. And uh, you, it's, uh, you have to go up there and you have to read from the Torah, right? They give you this pointer with a finger on it. That's right. A silver finger. and you, you It's read. like sorcery. And you got to read like maybe one phrase or something. But in most cases, what they try to do is teach you how to read Hebrew so that when you see this on a piece of paper, you'd be able to read it. No, no way that could happen with me. I mean, I, I've got the attention of a Donald Trump, okay? And... Uh, I, uh, uh, they, they literally, the rabbi was sitting next to me going, Mashti, 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 Mashti. You know, and I'm going, Mashti, Mashti, Mashti. <laughs> but did you actually learn Hebrew enough so you could read that text? Yeah, man. I mean, no, didn't you go to Hebrew school? No. I, this, this guy taught me some Hebrew. Oh, man. No, when I was in grade school, I used to have to go to Hebrew school twice a, twice a week after school. You're, you, you Somehow, I, I don't conceive of your parents having been that religious that they would send you to Hebrew school. I just think they thought it was something for me to do. Well, I mean, there's other things you could do, like... Uh, Y'all, you're telling me. Yeah. I used to hate it, man. There were only six of us, and um, one year I got the award for best student, and all I did was get a 60 out of 100. You know, at this point in our life, we go, life's too short to learn Hebrew. You know, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I just, I, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's you, not, it's not, it's hard to learn. It's hard, you know, and it, and it won't stick with you unless you're using it all the time. And yeah. I'm sorry, growing up a l- little boy in West Virginia, there just weren't a lot of places to go and start rambling. And yeah, well, people. if you're going to, if you're going to learn a language, you better use that language. Otherwise you are going to lose it. Right, like I still have a shot to learn Spanish because everybody around here speaks Spanish. So if I if I learned it, I get to use it every day if I wanted to. Let me ask you a question. I am looking at you. I've been. Uh, we did two of these today. We recorded two at the same time. Uh, well, not at the same time, but separately at the same day. Anyway, and it, I'm, you're sitting in a chair, and I'm looking at you, and in back of you is a field with trees. 
and it looks it looks real. It's almost like a blue screen. What is that in back of you? A field of trees. What is what is, what is it back of you? No, that's my window. Oh, really? Yeah. Do, do are there trees out there? Oh, I wish. Wait, what, what am I looking at? Boy, I must be blind as a bat here. See, that's my window. No, oh, there's the window, but I but somehow there was something happening with the uh, with the light or whatever where it was just you. Okay, and, and what seemed to be in the background was oh, I see now. It's it's the ledge on the window. Yeah, it's the ledge on the window, it, it and looked, there's bars on the window, and there's cockroaches. Believe it or not, for a while it looked like you were sitting in a field. I'm not kidding you. Oh, I feel like that. You relax me. Uh, do I? I really relax you. You relax me, and I feel like I'm in a field. That's my uh, safe safe zone that I go to. That. They treat you, you know, sanctuary. That's what they treat you. Self-hypnosis, you put yourself in a trance by going to your sanctuary. So before I talk to you, I put myself in a trance, and my sanctuary yeah. is the is the uh, uh, is a field. And I think it it's such a strong uh, metaphysical thing that you can actually see it too. Well, you live in Hollywood, right? Or is it Hollywood you live in, or? You- Oh yeah, I've, I've lived. I lived in Hollywood. Let me tell you something, Alex. I've lived in Hollywood for 24 years now. People are like, "Why?" And they're telling me, like, they're telling me, "Oh, I was there for two weeks. I couldn't handle it. I was there for a month. I let, I I made it for a year. That was it. And I've been here for 24 years. And I tell them the same thing. I go, "If you think you can get a small part in a movie every 10 or 12 years by not being here." But then, Mister, I guess you weren't born to try. Well, let's see. You do have a movie career, don't you? I'm just saying, movie parts, small movie parts, don't come knocking on your door if you're not living here. You got to be available for them. But you have actually done movies. I've done movies. I've done. Uh, let's see, two, then five heartbeats is three, blue sombreros four. Uh, so far, Pirates. I haven't heard of any of these movies, but go on. I know, uh, but I well, got well, paid you, nonetheless, which was nice. Well, you're, you're the you're, oh, Boondock Saints. You've heard of that Boondock one? Boondock Saints two, two, yeah, not Boondock one, Saints but two. two. And uh, which I watched you in, and you were very good. But, thank you. But you were too, you were too dressed up nicely. I know, man. But uh, that's but, you, but you you have a nude scene in there. Yeah, I was completely naked, man. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And uh when uh when we were filming that scene, mm-hmm. this woman, Julie Benz, she uh was supposed to spank me with a paddle. Mm-hmm. And uh because I don't know that she's there, basically. And she's yeah. an FBI agent that came to rouse me. So my director, when we took a break, he came up to me and says, You know, Julie, he just hit, she's barely hitting you. Can you just say something to her? You know, because she thinks she's hurting you. She won't listen to me. I said, I'll take care of it. So I went up to Julie and I said, hey, I've been waiting all my life to be in a gangster picture. I love movies like this. Now, you cannot hurt me. Look how big I am. You bring that paddle and break it off on me if you have to. She's like, all right. So um, she hit me so hard, I went flying off the table into the wall a piece of something on the wall came down on me. I completely missed this mat this, that they had to, to catch me. And uh, my sock, my cock sock came off and everything. <laughs> they put a sock on you, right? Yeah, they put a they put a cock sock on you. And you know what? The funny thing was, it was very cold in Canada, number one. Number two, normally you go to your trailer and your wardrobe's hanging there. You know, like you, like you said, I was dressed nice. So I had a business suit. And a long coat and nice shoes and socks. Normally, that was my wardrobe. But on the naked day, they put in a, a, there's two hangers. On one hanger is a sock. On the other hanger is a smaller sock. Like, <laughs> like you get to decide. So I said, shit, it's cold out. I'm not stupid. I took the small sock, rolled it up, put it in the large sock, and then put that on. <laughs> and with that, we will bring to a close another Wonderful discussion. Yay! Uh, an intellectual time we spend. Oh, yes. 
with the old Rube, Bob Rubin. Who, it's fun, Alex. And you're going to be in San Francisco taping your special, 29th of the month. Yeah. Be there or be square. And all the people who contributed get to get in for nothing. That's right. Well, how are you going to make money on that gig? Anyway, thank you, Bob. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Well, everybody, here we go. Yes, sir, we're uh, ready to go. Thank you, Bob. By the way, um, (laughs) when I recorded that, I forgot that it was going to be running after his show in San Francisco. So that's why we plugged it. Okay, so don't think you're going to be going this week to do it. Okay, all right? Just a, just a, a wee bit of a uh, uh, heads up to you. Anyway, it's time now for us to talk to our citizens panel, and I've got to bring up my uh, Skype, and I've got to turn it on. Okay, we use Skype, by the way, uh, if you want to talk to us. I mean, there is a way you can talk to us by phone, but uh, you, and that's by calling us at, let me see here, let me get the number out. Uh, I never can remember it. Right, three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. I'm dyslexic, so I have a slight dyslexia, and I have to look at numbers when I say them. Otherwise, I'll get them all fucked up. Anyway, uh, and uh, if you, but the best way to call us is using Skype. And if you don't have Skype, go to Skype.com, download their program. Very easy to install. They ask you four questions, like on Passover. Uh, 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 your first name, your last name, why is this night different than all other nights? No, uh, uh, your email address, and what you want is your ID. Our ID, if you want to call us, is GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. That's the number you can use to call us. And um, if you forget it, go over to GabNet.net. If you forget any of the various things, or you want to be able to get to Skype and whatever... You go over to gabnet.net. All the information is there on how you can participate as part of what we call the citizen panel, which is not just one person talking at a time, but upwards to nine other people besides myself. So for a total of 10. And um, uh, and I hope at this point, I hope people will call. All right. It, it's my big desire that they will call and that life will be wonderful here. Uh, part of my problem is tonight, I'm not I'm not feeling that well. I'm feeling a little puny. I don't know why. And I wish I had a, a reason why, but I don't. So, um, you know, uh, I, I wish I were feeling better. Uh, but maybe I will feel better if you'll call. All right. Let me see here. Uh, delete that. Okay. So we're ready to go here. And I'm just ready if people are ready to call. And uh, that uh, that could happen at any minute. We don't know. Uh, This is where I wait during the show to see if anybody does call, you know. And uh, it's not not wonderful, uh, waiting. Because I don't like to start a discussion here. I don't start want to do a rant because somebody will then call and then it'll kind of interrupt the rant and I'll have to. So I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting for people to call. Now, I always complain that nobody, you know, nobody's calling about this time of the show. And about uh, 11.30 at night, I'm complaining because uh, we've got so many people on the line that it's getting congested. So, you know, it either rains or it pours. But uh, I'm waiting for you to call. And, uh, oh, I know Jeff Stein is coming online now. So that's some sensibility that uh, we have going here. Um, and Phil Meyer is calling as well. So, well, let's see here. Let's take Phil first, and then let's add... Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. No, oh, boy. Problem with Jeff. Uh, Je- Jeff, you're going to have to call me back, okay? You're going to have to call back. Uh, there was a problem with Jeff, okay? I mean, I could add... Are you there, Phil? Phil? Are you there? Uh, wait a minute. Here we add Jeff Stein. Okay. And then here comes Phil. And there we go with Phil. Are you there, Phil? Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. Jeff. And you're there too, right, Jeff? Yeah. I'm okay. And, all, and now, now we're waiting for all your, your cameras going, Jeff. And we're waiting for Phil's camera to go. So, so we can see people. Let me uh, also I'm just go over awesome. there and let people see what we're, what we're seeing here. Uh, uh, two big pictures of two big people oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, well, what 
uh, uh, Jeff didn't want to be me, and John says, "Let me be me. Let me be Phil." <laughs> Last yesterday, that was cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> uh, and they were both better than you are. So uh, always, I, I I I liked them better than me. Yeah. But um, uh, I I saw. Uh, thank you, by the way, for uh, telling Bob that I was going to show up at the Throckmorton last night. He was there. Yeah. Uh, I photographed him. I photographed Gonzo. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. He said to say hi to me. So yeah. that was nice of you. And so, what are you going to do with the pictures? I'm going to give them to Bob and Gonzo and the and the theater. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gonzo says that he's uh, coming out with a book and the pictures help. And, uh, a book about what? Uh, him and comedy is, you know, comedy. He thing. didn't have much of a career, though. Uh, you know, he opened for a lot of people. He played with a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I like he, him. You know, I, I have nothing against him, but he, but he, he, he kind of bailed out early. Well, he became a university professor. Yeah. An English professor. And uh, now he's, uh, you know, having a resurgence. And, you know, I'm, I'm noticing maybe that's true of a lot of comedians that were popular that, or you helped make popular in the Bay Area in the early 80s. And now all of a sudden there's a resurgence. Well, oh, also your friend Bubbles was there, but uh, I didn't get a chance to say no, hi to him. No, there's not a resurgence, really. No? No. Well, maybe they're just all hanging out in the same place. Well, I mean, just because the Throckmorton is doing comedy, it, it's, it's not... Uh, it, believe me, there's no great renaissance going on. Uh, if you Google comedy in the Bay Area, you've, you've got a number of number of places. Yeah, but they're all paying shit money, you know, well, what and, else and they're treating the comics like crap. So, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. You know, yeah so. uh, nothing else new. And there's some new, uh, you know, up-and-comers. Uh, if I could remember their names, I would tell you. But <laughs> I, I should have wrote them down. I, I don't much care. I'm out of that business. You know? Yeah. I'm out of that business. Uh, I just talk to these people because they're my friends and I like them. Mm -hmm. And they entertain me and I hope entertain the audience when they hear them. Um, the, and these are guys people should have known about. But, you know, uh, it, it's, it's kind of sad in a way. But, you know, so far as uh, Dr. Gonzo goes, you know, he does have a distinction. And that is? He was the first comic I ever had on the air in San Francisco. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. In fact, the first show we ever did the first concert show we ever did with comedians was called the alex joe and gonzo show oh yeah so i, I was probably there uh did you do that you were at camel right when you did <clears throat> no let's see here i don't know where we were at the time all i know is in the east bay somewhere yeah um didn't you also do something uh some big show up in uh, lake tahoe or, or was uh, no. Was that a Bobby Slayton thing that we went up to? Bobby Slayton was playing up there. That's when Bobby got married? No, no. no? Uh, long before that. Oh. Yeah, we went up there once because um, they were a bunch of people were playing up there. I think Bobby was opening up, and I can't remember who he was opening up for, but Robin showed up because he was making a movie up there ah. and showed up and just kind of hung out with everybody. Walter Matthau, too. Really, I yeah. I didn't see them in the in the room. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, but, you would have you would have known that night if you uh, were yeah. there. Well, you know, no, you probably said, "Hey, Phil, you got to leave. Uh, there's uh, important guys coming to the room." Yeah, yeah, we don't need you. <laughs> get, get lost, no, your, get lost, uh, nobody. What? What was the, your description of uh, camels? You mentioned that. Oh, just that, the uh, radio station was named the Camel K M E L. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was the cigarettes. Yeah, no, no, it was, uh, uh, and. It had uh, his cousin's uh, logo. Yeah, my cousin's husband's logo. Husband's logo. Well, yeah. that, that, he, that's he did, close He did enough. the logo for the radio station, which was a really great cartoon elf, uh, camel. Yeah. But I hate camels. Uh, <laughs> they used to, every now and then, they would bring out a real camel to a camel yeah. event. Those things spit at you. Yeah, one They're the meanest two. fucking animals in the world. They just have a nasty disposition. They're like an old man who's got a bad yeah. prostate. Excuse me, Phil. Uh, yeah. Hey, well, yeah. if you hung out in the desert and didn't drink for 40 days, <laughs> you, you would, uh, you'd have a bad attitude. Yeah, but you've always got a hump. Yeah. <laughs> just on some the back. Some have two. Yeah, some have two humps. Two humps or three? Dromedaries. Yeah, dromedaries, yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, so you, so you enjoyed the show last night that they did, and yeah, it was yeah. it was okay. All right, 
good. It was very nice. Good. I'm happy. And um, yeah, Bob, and you went to Bob's show on on. Uh, uh, was it Saturday? Saturday. Uh, yeah. 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 I was one of the donors, so I got to go to Bob's show. And matter of fact, I have to send this to you. Let me go grab it. What, what do you? What, oh, you, yeah. Like you're going to send it to me. Hi, John Rockwell. How are you? Hello this evening? there. Yeah. It's, oh, there I am. Okay. I was wondering whether it, I just automatically turn my camera off and on, and when I get on here, just to make sure it actually connects. Yeah. Oh, here we uh, go. Let me see. This here. is the uh, the Bob Rubin poster I got, yeah. and I had him address it to. Uh, the Gabnet crew, happy times, love Rube, and I'll send it to you, Alex, uh, so you can uh, put it up. Yeah, okay, fine. Put it right right, right back there with everything else nice. that's cluttering yeah. this room. <laughs> better, better your clutter than mine. <laughs> yeah. Now, you see, here's the, here's the thing, Phil. John yeah. goes back before you. Uh, well, oh, no, yeah. I knew you when you, uh, well, I, I knew you, I met you, I didn't know you. I met you and went to your uh, apartment and had breakfast with you uh, when you were dating Naomi. And uh, so it must have been 14th Street. That had to be 73. Uh, 73? Okay. Then Rockwell comes after you. About yeah. 76, I think yeah. I popped yeah. in. So, because I moved from New York in, uh, in, late, uh, in early 73. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Kevin, try turning your camera on again. It's not catching. For did it reason. die out? Yeah, uh, try, try it again. Now, see, there we have his picture, and then let's see if if he pops in. Eh. I don't even have the picture, huh? <laughs> I don't even have the picture of him. Well, he, Just he, came, in, he came in for a short time. Yeah, it's not. It's not catching. Yeah. Mm. It's on. I know. I know. Yeah. Here we go again. Oh, there Never we go. There up. you Never are. Goes to hell. There you are. There you and, are. Uh, and I met some guy uh, that uh, I I think he had some association with you. I met him last night. He was with Firesign Theater or uh, Mike. Um, what was his name? Mike. Uh, but he knew you, and he said through the Firesign Theater. Firesign Theater. Fireside Theater. Whatever you, you know. Whatever. Firesign Theater. Oh, but Bill Proctor. Or? Um. Uh, no, it was a Mike somebody. Well, I know there's, there's no Mike that I know of with the uh, Empire <coughs> Sign Theater. Right. You turn your camera on again, Kevin. It went off. Mm -hmm. He's having a little bit of trouble tonight. Yeah. It's, I never yeah, heard it's the brother on. What? Blue light, so it looks like it's on now. Yep, yep. Well, sometimes your camera's on, but it's just not. It's Skype. You know, yeah, it's, it, uh, it's a Microsoft product. What can, <laughs> what can you expect out of it? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I found that uh, I always have to fl uh, toggle the camera once uh, I get on Skype. Otherwise, it's uh, not really? on. Yeah. yeah, I do it before I get on. And then once I get on, and this one, it didn't work. Well, I heard from uh, oh. I, uh, last night I ended the show by saying that I wasn't hearing from. Uh, where's my. Where, what hmm. the hell happened to my. Well, that's weird. Well, yeah, on Facebook Live, I can see Kevin, but on Skype, I can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm really out of it tonight. I think I've got Oh, some, it's a little behind. I know what you look like, Kevin, so that's not, you know. Yeah, it's a little I, behind, I think. Uh, last night, I ended the show by talking about my, my situation with, uh, with uh, 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 Seagate and the fact oh, that yeah. I wrote them. Well, they finally wrote me back today, and they said what they thought that was wrong and might be the problem. And so I checked it, and sure enough, something was turned on that should have been turned off. So now I've got my problem solved. But tonight I come in, I'm, I'm, I think I'm running a temperature, but I'm running a 90, uh, 98.5 temperature. Normal. <laughs> That's normal. But for me, I always run low rather than high. So I'm, now I'm worried I'm sick. Oh, jeez. <laughs> You know. Hey, did uh, did uh, Seagate get back to you, or did you just figure they, they, it out? No, they sent as uh, wrote back to me, and oh, it, it wow. turned out they've got a thing in there in which you can like back up stuff a little bit. And so I uh, I went to it, and sure enough, it had been turned on. I never turned it on, but it had been turned on. So so far, I'm not having a problem. So I'm going to see. I'm going to leave. I'm leaving the Seagate program up and i'm going to see if it if it works you know yeah you're not going to mess with the dashboard again no i have the dashboard on now oh okay so you, you just turn the switch off yeah turn that switch off and let's see if it works you know and i'm feeling a little nauseous tonight i don't know i just maybe it's just nerves i get so nervous doing this show it's it's just so gets me. it's i'm so apoplectic when i do this show um but um 
Uh, so it was a good show, Phil, and Ruben uh, did a good job, right? Yeah, he, uh, he uh, did uh, some of the material that he did for his uh, video. Yeah. And uh, he's, uh, he's, got a good, he's got a good act. Yeah. And uh, yeah, two of them uh, were basically the headliners. It, yeah. And, and what? Two of them? No, I'm talking about um, for Saturday. Oh, on Saturday, yeah. No, I was talking about last night. Okay, on Saturday, yeah. yeah he had a uh, he had a uh, very good show. Good yeah. crowd. Uh, uh, there was the seat available. Good, good. Where was Terrific. it, Phil? Uh, it's a place called Doc's Lounge. It's uh, I Doc's think it's the old lab. purple. It's called Doc's, Doc's Lab. lab. Uh, the lab. There's a lounge and there's the a lab. The old purple onion. Lab. Yeah. Hmm? It's the old purple onion. Yeah. Uh, the I the I think the lounge is the restaurant. And then the uh, lab, or vice versa, is the uh, is the venue, and uh, the venue's downstairs, and it's like a cave, uh, very nice. And let me tell you, the food at this uh, docks was excellent. I cheated on my diet. I had a hamburger. Which you don't was- cheat on a diet. You either go off the diet or <laughs> you don't go off. Not the diet. I went off the diet. Uh, I had a couple. Well, of when cocktails. people say I cheated on my diet, no, you didn't cheat on your diet. You went off your diet. Okay, but you I, fucked I, I up. Go off the diet. You fucked up. And this hamburger was made from uh, braised short ribs, and they, the meat from the braised short ribs. It was it was so good. <laughs> it was it was worth the two pounds <laughs> I had to take off the last couple of days. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, how, uh-huh. how, by the way, how's the diet going? Uh, I'm I'm at a um, I'm stalled around two eleven. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I've been stalled. Uh, but, um, you know, maybe just you hit these plateaus and, uh, at what point are you no longer a fat fuck? Uh, I'm almost, uh, if I walk down the street now and people look at me, I look normal. So I don't look fat. What? You look like a duck waddling? Yes, but not, (laughs) but not fat duck. (laughs) Well, your face is still round or has it always been Mm. round? Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, well, you know, look, I'm 211 pounds and five foot eight. Uh, I'm going, I'm, I'm heavy. Well, and you but, should be going uh, quack, quack. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that, uh, I can see my feet and, uh, I, I, I feel comfortable. You can, and, you I know, know you can see public. your feet, but can you see your penis? No, I couldn't see, see that's it. the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, welcome to your world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's nothing new. Yeah. But uh, uh, so, uh, how many pounds have you lost? Thirty. Thirty. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Pretty good. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, done, I've another done thirty to go. I've done about fifty-five. You know, that's that's where I need to be. Yeah. Uh, fifty-five, sixty. And I'm eating bread now, and I'm eating a few things. I'm not eating sweets, but I'm uh, I'm eating uh, breads and a little bit of pasta here and there. And I don't gain a pound. I don't lose a pound. I stay right where I am. So you well, know. where I'm having problems is uh, I start craving uh, carbs because my sugar gets too low. If I don't take those shakes at the right intervals, yeah. uh, I, I get the I shakes. Get ravenous. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, get, I get the, the shakes. shakes. Yeah. Exactly. I get ravenous, and uh, it's very hard to overcome. Well, and, what I found, know, what I found, went is. Uh, I, I was getting a little lightheaded and stuff, so I started taking in a certain amount of carbs every day, like about 35 or 40. Yeah, that's and, still fun. And I found when I did that, though, that eating the carbs made me crave carbs. In other words, it created a craving. So yeah. so the big thing, I guess, about a low-carb diet is that you're not taking in the very thing that makes you feel hunger pangs. So, And if I, if I took some, if I took in, a, like, if I had an ice cream cone, uh, that would start causing me some kind of grief. At yeah. this point, I think I go into diabetic shock or something. You know, well, because I, I am a diabetic. It. When uh, when my sugar gets too low, everything gets messed up. Yeah. So I have to be a little more careful about uh, yeah. you know where I'm at. Maybe I should test more often during the day and uh, keep better track of it. Oh, you know, I, so far tonight, jerk. Phil, I was just looking here. You're the only guy without a beard. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I'll always be without beard because when I grow a beard, I look like a you know a Puerto Rican guy. You know, most of them can't grow a beard. You got these little blank spots that. Uh, well, I always you know, used to have never- a blank spot here, so that's why I just do the the goatee thing. You know, the Van Dyke, yeah. I guess they call it. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I start early enough, I could definitely be a uh, department store Santa. You know, but I will grow. <laughs> it will grow out. You know, but I, I've never really. I kept it 
to this size uh, just because well, I like it. But, look, you know, I, it, everything else would grow. It would be interesting. Uh, Kevin is a good example of a, <laughs> oh, ba- a Santa go. beard. <laughs> sure. Well, I use it for that every year, too. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great beard. I started though. about, uh, what, five, six years ago I started doing it. Now, does your wife like it? Only on Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> She has no say in it. Oh, she's she's sitting back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 well, I didn't hear anything, so it must be okay. Oh, did, is she can he she hear the com my com my my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, do you like the beard? Um. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> my wife hates beards, but yeah. that's why I have one. <laughs> you know. Well, it started. Wife, beard. Um, and speaking of an, of a beard, here comes another beard, Rob Alfano. <laughs> Rob, turn on your camera so we can see that beard. Yeah. Are you oh, there? It's not on. Are you, when I was no. working, I had to no. keep my uh, face shaven a little bit at work. Yeah. So see, once there we got laid yeah. off, I said, "Screw it." There we go. That is it, that's a beard, right? Right, Rob. I can't see from here. It's a goatee. It's, it's, it's a goatee. Yeah, because I, I it looks it's in just that this l- part of it's still dark, and this is all gray. Oh, I see. That's why I'm having yeah, a hard time. Yeah, why it looks more like a mustache yeah. than it looks like okay. a beard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Yeah. So uh, the reason I I got a beard was because uh, I was taking so many Coumadin. And every time I would cut myself shaving, I would really bleed for hours. Yeah. I Not that. that I was going to die, but wow. it was just a oh, total. You just of... bump into anything. You can bump into a, a yeah. light switch and you start bleeding. Oh, yeah. You, you bump into something and all of a sudden you got a big blue thing. Over there. Well, that's a, and everybody that's, says, what happened? That's a very good reason, though. <laughs> by the way, we're being joined by Patrick. Uh, who, hey. people, hey. people will see on their screen any moment <clears throat> once he pops in. There he is. Hello, hey. Patrick. How you feeling? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You made it through everything okay? What, no, my... got canceled. I'm uh, gonna redo it uh, oh. or actually do it uh, next Wednesday. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I didn't know you got canceled. I wasn't on last week, so. Yeah, it it, it got canceled. So. Uh, they canceled it right when I was in the hangar bay waiting for surgery. So. Really? Jeez. Yep. Oh, you were were, you, all, were you all dressed up and everything for it? Yeah. The only good thing, they did not start me on the early um, anesthesia, you know, to kind of calm your nerves. Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't on anything, so I could leave immediately. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Good. Did they charge a deductible? Uh, actually, I'm going to go eight ship. If even the insurance company get billed for anything, because it was a whole waste of a fucking uh, time to be there, because the anesthesiologist that I met with for pre-op failed to see that the way that they were going to intubate me could actually cause bleeding. <coughs> the itself was not going to cause bleeding, so I wouldn't have had to go off my blood thinners, but the way they were going to intubate me could cause bleeding, and the actual anesthesiologist that was in charge, he's the one who canceled the surgery. He said, it's an unnecessary risk for uh, a bleed. He said, yeah, we could take care of it, but it just, no. You know, we should really rename this program Alex's Waiting Room. <laughs> you know, I haven't even told you about my MRI earlier this week. Oh, we'll get to that oh, later. Well, let's get to that. As long as uh-huh. we always start Funny off the show uh-huh. with, like, I'm running, I'm running what I consider a temperature of 90, 96, uh, 98.5 or four, uh, and uh, that to me is, you know, uh, but it's nothing compared to what you know Patrick has or what yeah. Jeff's uh, little problems are, or even Phil Meyer who has prostate cancer. Uh, but John, tell us about your MRI. Oh no, 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 don't no, no, no. This is just you know from my my heart failure episode back in November, uh, where they had lots of fluid. I had a lot of fluid around my heart and all that. Yeah. I went to a new cardiologist, or at least the guy I was supposed to have gone to a few months ago. Yeah, and he was sort of looking at it all new again. I said, "Gee, we I don't know why you you had this problem. You don't have hypertension." Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I say I'm also 
about 35 pounds less than I was in November yeah. when I did have this problem. But he said, I'd like to have a couple of have you go through a couple of scans so I can see the way you are now. And one of them was a lung scan, which I did last Wednesday. Yeah. And then on Monday, I did the cardio MRI. Yeah. Uh, I've had both of those in the past, but they were way long ago, back when I had had DVT problems and things where they were looking yeah. at all this, make sure I didn't have you, any You want to know something? Though, I, I may have mentioned So a lot, that, of, a lot of fun tests. I, I may have mentioned this before, but my biggest fear in medicine is that I'm going to have to have an MRI. Now, now you're going, why? It's just, you know, it's a magnetic resonance, whatever. I have claustrophobia. I have right. just deadly claustrophobia. If they put yeah, me in that tube. Just take a sedative. And, uh, I, the, a sedative wouldn't do it. I, you'd have to put me out. So Some of them I, are pretty enclosed, but there's a lot of open No, they're out. open MRIs, and I've seen what they look like. I think I could tolerate them. Yeah. You know, this one, one was, I guess you call it closed, but I mean, you could still, if you, if I rolled my eyes up a bit, I could see where the, the entrance to the MRI tube was. So I, I didn't feel as claustrophobic. I want my if head had closed I, me in. I, I want my I head guess. outside right. of the tube. Right. Let's just keep your eyes closed. Yeah. I, it, uh, believe me, I wish I could uh, uh, say mm -hmm. that that would work for me, but I, it, just being put in that tube would panic the shit out of me. And, yeah. and there are people like me, so they have open MRIs. I, there's one I saw where you sit in a chair and it's like this room. Mm -hmm. And you just sit at the end of the room and it scans your entire body. Yeah. And, a lot of doctors don't think they're as good as the other ones. But, hey, you know, it depends on what, depends on what hey, they're scanning if, for. if you don't think it's as good as the other ones, it's the only one you're going to get if you want to see what I look exactly. like. You know? If I go to a bar, I see women at the bar, I scan their entire body and I don't even need the MRI. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's noisy as hell. little oh, sexist joke from the Republican. Hey. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yes, Jeff. In training. Can't you take uh, medication to reduce that? So you're almost asleep? Well, uh, I, yeah, I, you know, um, I think they'd almost have to put me out, you know? I mean, really. And they want you to breathe. They want you to, they have you, they had me breathing and holding, yeah. <laughs> exhaling and holding I, well, my breath uh, when for I, like when, when 10 I or 12 seconds. When so, I've done, you know, CT, uh, 40 times. When I've done <laughs> CT scans, yeah. they, they tell you to do that. Hold your breath. How long now. are you in that there scan, for? Yeah. How long are you in there for? In what? Uh, I was in there for, in the actual tube they put me in for about 20 minutes or so 25 See? minutes and then they pulled me back out and then because i hadn't they put it had put an iv in me before because they were doing contrast yeah. in the you know so that 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 they could see the blood vessels better and all that so they put that in waited about a minute to put me back into the tube for another 15 minutes or so oh, uh, so i was there i got there a little well I, I got into the into the in the mri machine probably about 12 15 i was out of there about one so it was it was it was a long for, it was a long for time. For whatever they want to find in you, you could probably have a CT scan, if I'm not mistaken, and it would work. Well, just I had as well. one before I left yeah. uh, back in November yeah. uh, to generally check on a couple of things, including my leg clot problems. And because the guy that I work with today said, "Hey, as long as you're as long as you're in the hospital anyway, yeah. you know, I've been wanting to get this scan with your veins and all that. So yeah. why don't we?" I said, sure, you know. Yeah, I'm all, but, I'm all prepped. But I, but right I think whatever they can get with an MRI, they can get with a CT scan too. Yeah, Patrick, I don't know the difference really in in yeah. in what they well, one what, uses radiation. What, what you, well, and uh, the upshot the upshot of it was uh, supposedly no. I mean, you know, my I haven't talked to the cardio guy, but my primary care uh, Dr. Jane uh, was she she got all the information enough, and she sent me a real similar thing saying, you know, your lungs look fine, no big deal. There's one small thing with the heart. Your your aorta is a little upward. Ascending aorta is a little bit dilated. You we should check that. You know you'll probably want to do. He'll probably yeah. want to do follow yeah. ups yeah. off and on. Okay. But no, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, pa Patrick's got <laughs> cool. his hand up. Yeah. Patrick. Well, MRI gets a little bit more detail than a CT scan, and that that the whole reason you're probably in it longer. I had an MRI that lasted. Roughly 90 minutes. Oh, Jesus. I could not yeah. take that. Oh, my That's God. That's a mind been, too. And the drugs would have worn off before that. Well, right. And, and see, I'm not claustrophobic. And I always tell the nurses and the doctors and whoever is in charge, don't worry about my comfort. Just make sure you get your job done. Yeah. And that, that, I'm not worried about me. I'm worried. You know, and even when they took me down on uh, <coughs> Thursday uh, for surgery... 
um, you know, I, I said to the people taking me down, I said, did the doctor get laid? Did the doctor have a nice breakfast? Did the doctor have a relaxing sleep? You know, I'm more concerned about them. So that 90 minutes in the MRI, yeah, it was torture, but they got what they needed. So that's all that matters. Yeah, do it once and do it right. Exactly. Now, if yeah. you're getting an MRI in your knee, why do they have to put you in all the way? Can't they, they just put you in to the knee? They don't, yeah. They'll put you, I, mine were all legs, most yeah. of them, uh, except when they went for the blood clot up in the chest. But they just put my legs in my, about, my, about my knees, probably my waist, just so they could get in the middle of the magnet. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you just lay there, but you can't twitch, you can't do anything. Hmm. So I, I sit amazing, there, just yeah. like Pat was saying, is you know, I want them to get it right the first time because I'm not going to lay there for 45 minutes or an hour or an hour and a half trying to stay still without, again, you know, yeah. just do it once and do it right. Yeah. Uh, somebody wrote on the, uh, on our, uh, uh, on, uh, in the chat room uh, that there's no sound, but I, the, so far as I can see from here, sound is going out. So if anybody uh, doesn't uh, hear sound, let me know on the TV thing. Uh, because I, I, I see it going out here and I checked to make sure it was going out, you know, I had every setting right and everything and everything is just right. So I, I have no idea what they're talking about. So. Well, I yeah. checked, I checked you out on the Facebook before, uh, switching on to Skype and you were fine. Oh, there was audio. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was audio. Well, Christine, then, you, a, then you're doing something wrong. Okay. Well, maybe that was. I think she might. That may have been back with the Ruben uh, thing. Maybe she was. She you know, couldn't hear yeah, you she, say that, though, Alex. She couldn't. <laughs> That's <hear>. true. <laughs> <laughs> might not be able to. Well, I, I know if, if if this is so. But before you came on here, you looked at Facebook, and we were going doing just fine. Yeah, with I actually, actually looked at it now. I have I have it up with the sound off just to see it's it's delayed, but everyone's yeah. yeah. Well, can you hear the sound? Turn it on for a second. Well, if I do, it's going to sound. Oh, it's fine. Going to get I echo, mean, echo, 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 echo. Sure. Let's Let's make sure we have all Hold on a sec. Uh, I've got to pop this up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're going out okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. it. Okay. (laughs) I got it on my phone, too. Christine, then you're you're fucked, Christine. You don't know. Uh, Is is the echo you'd hear if you did that called harmonics? Huh? Is that called harmonics? No. It's a delay, actually. It's a delay, it's a, yeah. it's a voice delay. Day, it's a delay thing. We used to, in the old radio days of mm-hmm. when I was in college radio in the 70s, you had you take a reel-to-reel tape deck, you have two of them next to each other, and run the yep. tape from one to the other, record yep. on one, play back on the other, and that right. would give you the echo, the echo, the echo. Oh, we used to use it, we used to use it for seven-second delay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You used to do call-in shows, you'd have a loop. And, and you'd put the one that's got the playback head on the air, and you, we'd had right. we had this crazy thing where they were pretty far apart, and you'd you'd run it, yeah, well, and you record could do, here you, and play back on the other one. Th- and that's how we did a fake then delay. You could that that it, was the complicated oh, yeah. way. Do you know? Did you know about the one machine tape delay? One machine? Yeah, that's the one we used a lot here in New York. Mm-hmm. You didn't probably the same idea. Instead of putting it between two machines, so there was a seven second delay between. Actually, the reason it was a seven second delay is because if you put two Ampex machines together, and you run the tape through one, and then you run the uh, the rest of it through the other, okay, it took seven seconds for the tape right. to get from one machine Transport. to the other. Yeah. But yeah. what we did is we made a tape, a mobi- made a strip, uh, a strip, <laughs> right. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then we ran it through the machine. But what we did with the machine was, and it was only used for delay, is we put the uh, playback head first, the mm. erase head second, and the record head third. So that it came around, played, then it would erase, then it would record, and then it would go around and come back and play. So that's how we did it with one machine. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, I was the first show in America to use digital delay. They had this box. And I got to tell you, this thing was like this. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the company that made it, but it was all a delay electronically. But we could only do three, three seconds was the delay. But it was enough to catch most things. And uh, when they put that in, that that changed the whole thing. And now, of course, you can do a delay on a computer like mine if I had to, you know, just by, uh, you know, getting a program that's a delay program. 
but back in those days, man, you had to go a long way to get these things done. Yeah. And <laughs> and you didn't want to record every show. You, you didn't want to save every show you ever did because how many how many ten inch reels of tape could you store in your house? Right. Yeah. You know now I could store. I've store. I have every show we've done on GabNet in one little file area here on the computer. You know. Mm. So that's how it's changed. By the way, I'm not picking my nose, folks. It's itching me tonight. Ah. Well, that's another reason I I can grow nose hair, but not a beard. You know, <laughs> you let it just let it keep 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 just keep when you grow, and then you have a mustache. You sort of yeah. it. Well, what I could never figure out is is you why is why it. this happens to me, right? right. But it's all growing out of my ears. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, just okay. moves downward. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, back, I guess you, for being like a when you were young, uh, John, <laughs> all of you, when you were young, did hair grow out of your ears? No, no. So no, where, where does it, does it now. Come, where does it come from? I'm not picking my nose folks. I'm just <laughs> trying to keep from it's itching ah, it's like, like crazy. it's like yawning. Now I want to do it. Yeah. yeah you got to get one of those little cutters, you know, those <laughs> little, got little nose hair trimmers. I tried those, well. but they don't work. Shove it up a lot. The heck for out of your nose. No, they they whirl around, and you think they get oh, a couple. Oh no, no layers. not the electric ones. I'm talking about the ones that look like scissors, but they have a very pointed uh, hmm. and short and pointed um, uh, end. A blunted tip. Yeah, one one's got a little knob on it, so you don't uh, cut yourself. Don't jab yeah. your you know inside nose hair or whatever. Wow. You know. Well, wow. And I feel medical to nose old, hair. Old school. <laughs> And I'm feeling slightly nauseous tonight. I wonder if I should take my temperature while I'm doing the show here. Just to... <laughs> absolutely, blood pressure too. Not while you're drinking hot. <clears throat> not while you're drinking no, hot. It, 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 it's not hot anymore. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, start talking. Let's see here. <clears throat> it should be a regular part of the show. Is the medical exam? I'll tell you what. Friday night, I got that little kit. Mm -hmm. Friday night, I'll take everybody into the bathroom. I'll take a dump, and we'll see how that kit works. Where you put your poop in the thing, mm -hmm. and, we'll, you know, and we'll have a real uh, medical exper uh, experiment. It's not as romantic as that. They give you a little scooper. You put the scooper in the thing, and uh, after after you use the thing, and then it's gone. You flush it. Oh, down. I haven't even I haven't even opened it yet. It's still sitting in the box. Uh, mm. Okay. Is that the colon uh, colonoscopy one or the one yeah, instead of the colonoscopy? Yeah, it's the one instead of the colonoscopy. I can't think of oh, what okay. it's called. Hmm. <clears throat> or her yeah. saying like a root, root, root. <laughs> <laughs> you know, A rectal instrument would be much more accurate. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. <laughs> yeah. Live. Well, let me see. Much here. more entertaining, too. Yeah. True. 98.9. Oh, my God. He's There's burning up. Yeah. My 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 normal temperature is not ninety eight point six. It's like it's lower than that. Yeah, mine is too. So I'm wondering what's wrong with me. Mm. Wondering if I have some kind of infection or something. Yeah. What's the temperature like out there? Out here, we were in the nineties today. You oh, were really? Yeah, it was ninety one. Really? Ninety five here. Mm. Okay. Oh. Uh, hello, uh, Brian. Wow. Well, I must take my hello. temperature again. Mm. And Kevin, you're in the Bay Area, right? Yeah, south of Gilroy. Oh, okay. Well, it gets really hot there. Yeah, it was 95 today. We had 95 here over the weekend. Mm. It was hot. like in the 60s here. So, uh, well, it was in the exciting. 60s here today. So that's how it's really wacky. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to cool down here as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. did drop 10 degrees in the last couple hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can't Please. keep it in your mouth, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He'll find a way. Just, just massage the sides. Flip right out. <laughs> you know, hey, Stick if you in your butt, it'll stay there. Yeah. Weather Channel says 57 in New York. Hmm? You, could, you could still host the show. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, I got a... Um, Sign uh, language. 98.9 on the other thermometer, too. Hmm. What is wrong with He's me? He's got two thermometers. <laughs> uh, I got a, a chrome... Backup thermometer? What? I got you a, have a regular thermometer and a backup thermometer? The, uh, yeah, I was trying to see which wow. one was, you know, they're both, uh, yeah. So I'm, I got a cheap chroma key uh, thing I'm going to play with. Yeah, fine. You got this green screen? Yeah, the the green program. screen, 5 by 8 Yeah. yeah. Two uh, how much is that green screen? screen? How much does the green the screen time, cost? See what happens. Uh, Adorama, $49 delivered. Oh. Software, green screen, and things that hang it. <laughs> And but uh, I'm going to have to figure out if my lights are powerful enough to shine on them to separate the 
so, uh, background. So Phil will become the uh, Gabnet weatherman. Uh, well, I, I don't the now I got the pro key light, and I think most of them I can have flowers behind me, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, and other things. I, I, there's a hundred or so um, uh, backgrounds, and I think most of them are for like little kids. Can't you <laughs> but, do your own background though? I'm sure you can do your uh, own. Probably uh, you should be able to use yeah a regular. Don't tell them that he'll get, he'll get a picture of Trump behind him. Watch. <laughs> That's a good idea. I could always put the White House behind me the way that Marshall, uh, uh, a Major Garrett guy, does. Yeah, but then we're going to have to music. put up with the whole night of you potchking around with your chroma key. <laughs> <laughs> to make noise. Yeah, I was thinking of putting one up here, but then again, I've got uh, I, I have so much room to cover here. Well, that, you don't need yeah. that much. Uh, you can uh, cut down on the angle of the camera. And uh, just use a smaller uh, uh, one on a stand. Well, I, I could. I, I also can uh, configure the video. I, in fact, I configured this video the other day so that the zoom was a little bit more in. Yeah, like that. There we go. And you can go back to video blocks and get those nice uh, video backgrounds again. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You get as many as you want for, what, 99 bucks or 150 bucks, something like that. Uh, when I... Uh, uh, looked at it uh, they had a special for uh, $99 you got video and audio blogs for a year but then it went up yeah okay well there, there now you 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 know if I did that I probably could put a green screen back at me but. yeah and uh, you know you can make it look like a radio studio or uh, or anything else that you wanted it to do put yeah. a new story on well I it, I don't really care about that well, it's the product, you know. Don't you want to expand the the product? You're doing so many things to to make a better product. But to, I don't. Know, how does that make it a better? The, pro how does that make it a better product? Well, you you know, the, you got the Facebook stuff going out on a live feed. You don't think that that would make it look better or make it more professional? And uh, just like uh, you know, these guys on TV, I think it's pretty cool. You know? you, you, really? Yeah. 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 yeah sure. And, oh, and, Alex. I, and when I get tired of this and can't make it work, I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, yes. I remember what we had to do in the old Midnight Blue days just to be able to have lettering, titling underneath whatever we were doing or titles on anything. Mm -hmm. We basically had black cardboard and we put white uh, letter set press on lettering on it and then, you know, ba basically Probably sort key. of fiddled around with the. Uh, with the video so that you wouldn't see the black and the white would come up, you know, and there, there, there would be your title for whatever program thing we were doing. If we wanted a color, we'd have to screw around with the color balance. You know? It's actually yeah. not even really, chroma really, key. Really, yeah. It was really, cards, really right? old, you know, old well, school to say the least. Well, we used to have a thing at, uh, at uh, Play Incorporated where I had in back of me the, uh, a bay, big bay window looking out at the, uh, at the bay. And mm -hmm. what that was was a reflective screen, and on each of our ca on the main camera that shot me straight ahead, we had this ring that went around the lens, that put out with a blue light, and reflected. And any so anything the camera saw against that screen was was blue. And then of course we could chroma key onto that, and it was a great chroma key. Did your it office was called a hollow ring. What? Uh, what? Did your office apartment have a view? Because the uh, no, one that I no. saw you in and uh, uh, looked to, on the street, uh, like on to Beach Street or something. Yeah, no, no, I didn't have any. There were no windows in the studio. No. Uh, okay. But it looked like I had this big, beautiful window out in the back, you know, in back of me. And yeah. uh, it was a great idea for chroma keying because you could change the chroma key uh, from blue to green to whatever you wanted, you know. Uh, it, it, green is the preferred color only because it's the color that uh, people will not usually be wearing if they show up on a TV set, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the worry on that was is that they would uh, uh, show Vanish, up. Say, basically. Well, they would show up wearing a, a, a blue outfit. Or blue in their or outfit. Blue shirt. Like I'm wearing a blue shirt right now. Yeah, a blue a blue shirt yeah. was a big problem. And so if you have a green background, very few people are going to show up wearing green pants. You know, it's not no, except on St. Patty's Day. I, I don't oh. think there's any reason you're going to have Bo Diddley on as a guest anytime soon. So you know, <laughs> not the moment. No. You know, 
but uh, anyway, so <clears throat> so I'm now a hun- I'm 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 ninety six point nine, ninety eight point nine. Is that uh, is that bad? Not, Not bad. for me. That's neurotic. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's neurotic. You're taking your temperature every ten minutes. Well, let me see if it's gone down. Yeah. Sounds like an FM radio station. I'm at ninety eight point nine. More music, more music. Right, that that. Stuff. Has anybody ever had the 98.6 on their radio? No. The song, but I don't know if there's any 98.6 mm. FM. Mm. I've Should never be. run across one. The most normal station so. you'll ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Well, K-San station. was 98.5. Well, no, that was. K-O-N-E, or KSGO. KSGO, yeah. I don't think any ra- I don't no, think any not, FM frequencies are in even in, even in numbers. Even. They're all yeah, ninety eight point seven we had here. Yeah, we have ninety eight point seven in New York. Ninety eight point. Yeah, I think we had it. Yeah, I think you're yeah, right. It's all, it's all odd numbers if you think about it. Point one, right. point three, That's point true. five, seven, one oh one one. It's like a thirteenth floor elevator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a few buildings with that. Ninety eight point five. Wow, you going hey, down? Now he's now yeah. he's in, now he's radio. I'd say Look, that I'd smile. Say, huh? Yeah, <laughs> no, the dog's it beeped and I'm down to ninety-eight point five. So I guess there's just some gazorchness going on. <laughs> and and that's your weight, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was well, just gonna say, much like Oprah's waistline, your uh, temperatures are yeah fluctuating. <laughs> yeah, they're fluctuating. Uh, yeah, what are you eating, Brian? And did you sh- could I, bring some to share with the rest of us? <laughs> no, uh, it's kind of hard. Using Skype to share ice cream with all of you. Oh, you're eating ice cream, eh? Ooh. You know, I, I, what do I miss on this diet? I, I don't think it. I miss the sugar stuff. Because once you're off of it, you don't crave it, you know? But every now and then, I'll see some piece of pastry and just go, oh, boy. That would be so nice. That would be so wonderful. Well, I, if it's any consolation, I, I need to eventually start losing weight, but... <laughs> I'm not rush right now to do so. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I work, for example, it's not like I work in a field in which I'm, I have to be presentable to a bunch of people. Yeah, what, did, what field are you in, Brian, exactly again? Uh, courier. Courier. Delivery. Okay. So it doesn't, they don't care what you look like. I don't give a fuck. So you're not a bike courier because all those guys have those bicycle bodies. <laughs> no. No, he's got a car body. Yeah. <laughs> or a bus body or something. <laughs> yeah. See the you know, you know, body. Here's something I've not been able to get girlfriend to understand. I, you know, I've had this knee thing, and it it's get, some days it's getting better, and other days it's bad again. And the other day, when before just before I went to the doctor, I accidentally put it uh, put, put it in a, oh, a position where I complicated it again. But anyway. She today says to me, well, you know, you'd be, you wouldn't be so sick all the time. You wouldn't be, you know, worrying about your illnesses if you just get out, take a walk. And I said, how exactly am I supposed to do that right now? You know, I said, it's not that I can't walk all the way to the park. I'm just worried that I'll get there and my knee will be hurting so much I won't be able to walk back, you know. And uh, she doesn't understand that this thing is, is, is kind of makes me. Uh, well, I shouldn't even say this around Patrick. Okay, forget Take it. Forget it, Patrick. It, it, you know, d- don't mind me with my fluctuating temperature. Yes, Patrick. You never went out and took walks when you didn't have. That, that's trouble. a good point. That's now a, you just have an excuse. I have a great excuse. And I would be on your ass like white on rice, just like she is. You, you, you know, I have a torn meniscus, and you know who has torn meniscuses the most? I do. Men, meniscus. Runners. Huh? <laughs> Runners. 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 So I want to know how I got this fucking thing, you know? <laughs> I'm sure I got mine when I years ago when I installed carpet. Well, that yeah, because that's that's, <coughs> I, 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 that's a killer on the knees, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You used to and, have that uh, thing where you used to have to pound them with your runners. knee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially steps. You have to use knee that kick, when you're yeah. Yeah. steps. Yeah. Uh, but you've got like a pad on your f- knee. But after mm-hmm. you, yeah, you, it's called it was called my meniscus. <laughs> it's called your <laughs> meniscus. It's important now. So you had meniscus problems because of that, right? I think so, and I n- I've never done anything about it. It's uh, other than occasionally having some discomfort, 
it, it really hasn't bothered me. Well, mine is is it, the, my my guy, my uh, uh, physical therapist says it will go away, given mm-hmm. time. But you know, I mean, uh, geez, sure, it'll fall off on its own. And then I got this thing <laughs> with my feet getting numb when I lie down or when I'm sitting for that's long your, periods of time. Uh, that's your um, that Sci- nerve that's sciatica. Yeah, yeah. sciatica. Uh, I'm a mess, you know, I, I, but not, you know, again, Patrick, laugh at me, okay? <laughs> Tell me I'm a fucking pussy. Will you please? You do, you can. You're the one who has the right to do that. No, I don't. Everybody's experiences are different. I just think it's, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit of politics. It's been nice when oh. Phil hasn't been here. We don't talk about politics at all. That's not true. Are you sure you guys last night were uh, more into we did. it? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't there, and uh, you you could you were like a, a, fl- uh, a moth drawn to a flame. What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> talking about Trump. Well, I mean, how can you, you talk about Trump pre- without prepared. saying nasty things about him? Yeah. Well, you even had pre-prepared stuff. But uh, I mean, I've got two Republicans on this panel, but only one of them likes Trump. Yeah. The other one is intelligent, smart and uh, uh, (laughs) rational. Stop talking about Jeff and Brian that way. (laughs) Did I hear this wrong or did Trump say that he'd like to he'd like to have. (laughs) All kidding aside. He'd like to have um, uh, Kim Jong un. Over to the White House for drinks. Did I hear that? Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago for drinks? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He figured if he brought him over there, uh, you know, he can win him over. Uh, But, you know, this ice cream is getting to me. Brian, where do you live? Are you in Ohio? (laughs) No, I'm in uh, Pittsburgh. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's let's get back to this for a second. Okay. We'll talk about your lust for ice cream in a few moments. There's a place called Grater's Ice Cream in Ohio. And they have the the best. Uh, so the way he's the way Brian's looking, that's probably what he's got in his hands. <laughs> no, it's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Alex. Sorry to derail <laughs> Trump. Uh, Briars. Yeah. Briars. Yeah. <laughs> it's Briars. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a very local brand where Black he is. Berry, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, local to the U.S. Yeah. Trump eats Briars. Yeah. Anyway. Alex, I'm, I don't news. see you at all. You don't see? Oh, you know why? Because my, my camera went off. Hey, has anybody seen these uh, these tweets that uh, are in response to Jimmy Kimmel's um, uh, monologue? Uh, uh, listen, about that, that monologue was wonderful. Yeah. Well, did, have you seen the tweets that have been generated from it? No. Who's jo- Who's Joe Walsh? Is that the host of uh, that True. show about uh, the member of the Eagles? No, yeah. not that Joe Walsh. This is another no, Joe Walsh. No, I think Walsh. he's a congressman. This is the guy from... Um, the, Are you confusing the, Rob? The president Are you confusing of a big company? With Illinois? I thought he was a congressman. Or John Walsh of... Uh, John American Walsh. Oh, Walsh. yeah, that's right. Because this is Joe Walsh. Sorry, Jimmy Kimmel. Your sad story doesn't obligate me or anybody else to pay for someone else's health care. Uh, I, I heard... Uh, uh, I read a tweet and uh, uh, that uh, what these people said was that uh, the, he would not have uh, been, not been able to cover his son uh, if there was no Obamacare. If he had insurance and he had a, a child that had a uh, birth defect, uh, it would have been covered. Except and, the fact that that kid would have been scarred for life and not able to get health care because he's got a pre-existing condition. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh-huh. That's what you're saying. Yeah, uh, and, and, and and you well, hear all these Republicans. You hear all these. That's Republicans exactly that's going, exactly what Kimmel you know, was saying. You know, but there's yeah. always the exception. Well, wait a minute, let me finish. That's exactly yeah, what you, Kimmel you know what's was saying. What's aggravating is you're hearing more and more of these Republicans on television saying things like, you know, if people don't lead a clean life, well, that's their problem. Well, this poor kid had nothing to do with leading a clean life or not, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's the exception. You know, well, no, yeah, it's not the on, exception. Please. There's a lot of congenital issues. People who have it in their genes. People have high cholesterol in their genes, regardless of what they do. <laughs> well, I believe Rob, Patrick. No, didn't, you have, that's, didn't you that's have? Didn't you have an argument for abortion? Hold on a second. Didn't you? Didn't you, uh, uh, Patrick, have some congenital problems? Things that you had at birth that that were a problem? Did you? Yeah. Yeah. And and so did a did a insurance company ever say to you it's a pre-existing condition? No. Okay. Well, it's interesting. So, uh, so you mean uh, you were able to continue coverage after the age of 
21, I guess, uh, or when you got out of college, uh, you were able to, to get health insurance. Oh, because you worked uh, and you were covered by health insurance from your employer, right? And then they can't uh, distinguish for pre-existing conditions. Yeah, I, I went right from my parents' insurance to work insurance. So Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, but anyway, the thing with Jimmy Kimmel was just really something to watch. I mean, uh, it was as real as television gets. And to his credit, I have a newfound respect for Stephen Colbert because the next night on his show, he said, last night, he said, I didn't watch my show. I watched Jimmy Kimmel's show to see what he had to say about his kid. And, and he explained the whole thing. And he said it was, uh, you know, it was an emotional plea about, among other things, about the need for for health care for America. And he said, uh, uh, and he wished him a lot of luck. And I thought that was really classy of your com competitor to say, go watch this show. Make sure well, you see. There's going to be a vote tomorrow. Uh, the Republicans are bringing the Obamacare vote to the floor. Of the Congress. Uh, well, to, yeah, well, the... Uh, did, it, did, what, where didn't it pass? It didn't pass in the Senate, right? No, it, it didn't. Congress. It never was... Uh, was uh, couldn't get was out of Congress. Congress. Wasn't even brought up in the Senate. Well, yeah, okay. it couldn't get out of Congress. I couldn't get out of Congress. Hey, listen, get rid of... Get rid of... Get rid of, get rid of get well, they could have gotten it in. They just knew it wouldn't pass, so they didn't want right. to be embarrassed and vote on it. Now so, they think it might. So they, Oh, that's so, sad. Well, they think some people think it won't. Well, get rid of Obamacare. What the fuck? Let's fuck up all of America. Let's let people die in the streets because I, they don't I, have I, medical insurance. I, I don't think that that's actually going to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Well, what's going to replace it? What, where's the plan to replace it, Phil? There is no plan to replace it. What are it. they voting on if well, they don't have voting on a plan? But it's, it's a half-baked plan with credits and all that. And again, it'll bring people with to give them access to health care that they can't afford. Well, that's no different than Obamacare. You know, if you might be able to afford the premiums, but you certainly can't afford the deductibles. What is what is what what is wrong with this country that we can't give people medical care? That's you know, that we we care so little for our citizens that we don't <laughs> give them and forget about affordable. I don't want to even talk. But hold on a second, Phil. I don't want to talk about affordable health care. Affordable health care indicates that you got to pay for it. I want to see health care the government gives to its people for being a citizen of this country and that you have the right to health. Okay? I have a friend with a lot of medical problems that's living in Thailand. And uh, when he goes to a Thai hospital... Uh, it might cost him $8 for, uh, for all the care that he had, including the meds, uh, you know, when they translate it into American money. And uh, I don't believe that Thailand has socialized medicine, but what they do have is they have uh, medical at reasonable prices because it's not being driven up. Uh, through legislation like it is in this country. Uh, legislation isn't what's driving up uh, the cost of, of, of uh, medicine, Phil. It's the insurance companies, the greedy fucking insurance companies and that are charging company. outlandish and the, yeah, and prices companies. for insurance. And the drug well, companies. And that's, and that's because the gov our government allowed that to happen. Doesn't matter who was hey, president hey, when hey, they allowed hey, it to hey, happen. Hey, under doesn't these, matter under, if it was under this Reagan. president, doesn't matter if it was under George this Washington, under this president, that's the state under this of our current un affair. under this and under this president, uh, he would not. Uh, he would go along with making sure that uh, you know the drug companies got away with murder and the no. insurance companies got away with no, murder. No, because what he wants is a free system, and and yeah, and, and what, you know what the free oh, system let me finish, gets you. Alex. No, you you yeah. just you've been talking over and over again, and you've been talking over me. So let me just I say to you, to. you won't let me finish. that you're really wrong. Because the fact of the matter is, uh, the insurance companies and the medical companies are are going to get have a field day if you allow them to decide what the prices are going to be. Because they're going to be competitive. Competitive against who? How many insurance companies are there that's now, Phil, right. to make it competitive? That's right. Because you got so many states that either have one or two insurance companies, and you can't buy that insurance across state lines. But this new if you plan bought it across Trump, state lines, you'd be buying it from the same two people you would have bought it from in another state if i could have bought uh, anthem blue cross in alabama where one of my reps works for a company out of alabama and 
uh, her husband got fantastic coverage because they had it through that company that could buy it in Alabama. If I could buy that coverage in California, I would have much better coverage. I'd have the kind of insurance I want. You know something, Phil? You want to know something, Phil? If that were to happen where you could go across state lines, you can bet your life all these insurance companies would get in line with each other and charge the same prices. Rob? Rob? Yeah, my question to you is when when Alabama, why would Alabama insurance be cheaper, or I should say coverage be cheaper? Because nobody makes a nickel in Alabama. I don't know that it was cheaper. It was better. In New York, uh, in San Francisco, in Chicago, you're not going to have the same costs. You're never going to be able to do that where you're going to buy it. You're going to live in New York City and you're going to buy <clears throat> insurance in Podunk, right? Right, but you're spreading the pool over a larger yeah, group of yeah, people. Yeah. And therefore, whether you're in Podunk or you're in San Francisco, when you have Jeff that has his hand up. with the lower cost areas, yeah. your cost is going to go yeah, down. Dream on, well, that means Jeff. That the, so what you're saying is then the, the cost will go up for the poor people in Podunk. Not necessarily, because it, it's going to get shared over a larger area. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, dream on, and, Phil. And, dream and on. when you let the states, uh, you know, uh, and you don't let the, the federal government uh, control everything, you know. I guess yeah. you know you you like the communist way of doing yeah, things, yeah. where the government does dream, everything for dream, you. Dream on. I like it. the government should do some things for me. I Certainly. pay them a lot of money every yeah, they year. They should fix okay. the roads. They should uh, you know maintain yeah, and they should fix the people too. And, and, and a military. Should, listen, Jeff's had his hand up. Jeff. Well, I, th- I got two things I'd like to say. Please. This is first of all, Phil. The insurance that you have is is what I know to be the cheapest company as far as insurance and well, that's because and, i was i was paying for a ton of people's insurance at one time yeah so you decided to anymore. to pay less or whatever i i you know i couldn't afford uh a uh, that plus i was younger and i didn't have any issues and everybody else wanted kaiser i i was not with kaiser i was with a john muir system uh mm-hmm. prior to uh getting the insurance for everybody <clears throat> and they all wanted kaiser that's what they wanted. So that's what I ended up with. A lot of people want it because it's effectively, you save a lot of money at, if I you're paying, very, very healthy. I was paying half. Yeah. But then ultimately, if you, if you need in case people uh, don't know what we're some kind about, of surgery, this is Kaiser. You're going to lose uh, it. This is Kaiser, which is a medical insurance or insurance system out in California. That's, that's an, an H- HMO. It's right? an HMO. Yeah. And uh, uh, as uh, Larry Bubbles Brown used to refer to it, uh, he used to call it doctor assisted suicide. <laughs> so. Well, you know, for what I need done, they want to use a hatchet and a hammer. And, uh, you know, I'm just not going to go for it. Because they already have a hammer. Yeah. You know, they don't have to buy a new one. Yeah. But the, but the other thing I was going to tell you is that uh, I, I worked on a lot of uh, devices and, and procedures that were done surgically. Mm-hmm. And it would start out in San Francisco, becoming <clears throat> very popular and whatever, and, and then the East Coast, whatever. And there was one doctor there, and he goes, I'm from Alabama. He says, I'll tell you what, you come to my hospital, he says, and we'll give you extra money because we're so economical and less costly that you can also go down to the Caribbean for a week after to recover, and we'll pay for that part. (laughs) Yeah. And, really? Well, all I'm saying is, uh, Phil, that, you know, uh, the, the, the Republicans don't have a plan to replace Obamacare. And I, I would agree with you that Obamacare is not terrific. It, it has its problems, and its problems were born out of the fact that what really uh, Obama wanted to get done was to take care of pre existing conditions, that whole thing about how long somebody could, st- how long a kid could stay on their parents' uh, insurance. And a few other things in the insurance company area, he he at least knew he was going to get that. He couldn't get what he really wanted, which was, of course, um, single payer health care, and he couldn't get it because the Republicans wouldn't l- allow him to have it. Don't forget Trump- Rahm Emanuel. Yeah, he was in the, he was in the way too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, the Trump uh, uh, plan has those things, you know, the pre-existing conditions and the 26 and all of those things. So w- what is what is so bad about it if it's going to give because you the I, because the because because I can't conceive a lot of the safeguards that, have been removed or or um, uh, 
uh, eased. Well, those safeguards are the ones that were driving the prices up. <clears throat> they protect people. No, they weren't protecting. It's pr protectionist things cause only uh, more pain later. Every time only you have in this country, controls. only in this country, Phil, and every other country that has uh, a single payer health care, these don't seem to be major problems. They've they managed to work. Maybe people, we, you don't hear Canada complaining. I'm talking about the Canadian government. Yeah, there's 20 million them. people there. Who cares? We got a Somewhere. lot more money coming in here. I mean, 330 working. million, right? And how many of our people are working and how many Canadians are working? I know We've there's 12, a lot 12, of money million, in taxes. 12 million illegal refugees that are probably not uh, paying into the system. Uh, and and uh, we have uh, well, then make, the, make them citizens really years. fast so they'll have to pay. Okay. People are paying taxes. They should get something for it. Hi, Renee. They do get something for it. Yeah, bomb. They just shouldn't get health care. Hello, Renee. God! <laughs> oh, oh. Phil! For God's <laughs> sake! Uh-oh. Jeez, and Jeff even tries to talk to you like a normal human being, and you're still way out in left field. And Ron no, is I'm in right field. I'm right sorry. Field, yeah. You're, you're right. That's where we put the slow people in right field. We put the good people in center or left. So here's the deal. You promised Jeff that you would call these hospitals and ask them how much your procedure would be without insurance. I haven't done that. Okay. So you do realize I'm keeping track of this. And the reason I'm bitching about it is because I, a female, asked you the same question more than a month ago. So are you going to respond to both of our questions, or are you just going to respond to his? Um, I'm getting older. My memory is uh, uh, lacking a bit, and I forgot. <laughs> you don't want to find out. It's, it's, you know, it, that's an important thing. It would, be, it would be good for me to know what that is because, uh, you know, maybe it's just worth going down to Stanford, doing what I got to do. Ten days later, I'm cured. Yeah, that would be that would be wonderful. We would all like that. We would all love to believe see me, Phil. In America spite of the fact that, that that we hate your fucking guts, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we also you care. Say that with we love. also care about you, and I'm sure Renee has <laughs> spent, has spent many an hour thinking. Did not come uh, out of well, Renee's hey, house. wait, wait, uh, let me finish. Single uh, payer, uh, viva la revolution, yeah, Che Guevara. Yeah, right. so, it has see, nothing to do with being a revolution or communism, you, you got it in Britain, you've got it in Germany, you've got it in France, you've got it in all the Scandinavian countries, none of which are communist Argentina. countries. <laughs> you, you've got 26, Australia. Australia. You've got 26 other countries that have this already taken care of. Doesn't sweet. And by the way, our health care is 34th in the world. Okay. I thought it was I'll tell you why this is. This is. It all has to do with the. It all no, has maybe to do maybe with I'm thinking about education. Uh, the American Medical Association. If you ask me, you can't get single payer health care because we're the only country that has where where yeah. everybody makes so damn much money and there's no control over how much money yeah. these people well, make. It, it's the one. Point. So if you're going to have single payer, those people aren't going to have yachts. It, it's and, and, the. It's the. It's the only country that I can think of. It, it, that is a Western industrialized nation yeah, that thinks of, of uh, medicine as something that's a profit-making deal. Right. Uh, it, it, a profit every, making everywhere deal, else, it is, not, it is not for profit. You know, a guy who is a doctor, for instance, in England, makes, a good, makes good money. He makes about $200,000, $250,000 a year, and he gets extra money for his patients showing uh, uh, being on a wellness scale showing that he's been able to keep them healthy okay so you could get up to words to about three hundred thousand dollars a year how much fucking money do you need that's a good living to make well and in so san it, francisco that would be poverty level well that's so, because you live in a country straight. where where landlords are allowed to get away with shit too yeah. Okay. What did they say? San Francisco poverty level is for a family of four is one hundred and three thousand five hundred dollars a year. Yeah, isn't that really? sad? Yeah. Isn't yeah. That sad? yeah that, I believe it. So, Phil, let, let's let's get this straight. The Republicans have used this whole shit ass stuff about states have rights. States should have this stuff. No, so, states should make decisions uh, that they shouldn't be mandated by no, the federal government. No, because we can't trust you fucking Republicans to make a decision that won't kill or destroy an American. And you can trust Congress. 
No, that too. But the issue okay, is, well, we've we've seen this game before. We've seen this is what what the Republicans want to do. They want to take the people with existing conditions and take them out of the general pool and mm -hmm. put them in another pool. It's called a but high risk happens, pool. But what happens is the money that is set aside for these people with existing conditions is never enough. Right. You've right. done this before. You know, how and does what that happens to those people, they actually just die, Phil. No, really how does it work do. with your driver's license? When you go to get insurance and you've got a lot of tickets, you get something called high-risk insurance. That's different. You can't compare health care and it's people insurance. who drive recklessly. But Did it's you insurance. get diabetes people for driving poorly? Yeah, uh, kind really. of. I kept driving to the McDonald's. That's, yeah, yeah nice. that, that's great. But that poor kid, Jimmy Kimmel's son, didn't do anything besides be born. Exactly. Well, you know, that's an exception. And many, 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 no, 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 no. No, it's not an exception. There are many people today who were born with all kinds of congenital yeah, issues. 98.8 again. Anyway, go uh, ahead. Let's, you, know, you know what the problem it's is? getting the hotter. Problem is, the, the problem is Congress has got everybody in their – the AMA has got everybody in their in Congress in their back pockets, and they're never going to let them reform the system to reduce the costs so that you could have affordable health care. Because you if you do have government health care, it's going to make everything – it's, it's going to seem like poverty for all these medical professionals. Patrick has his hand up. I think there should be mandatory abortion. Anybody who gets anybody who gets pregnant, the first pregnancy is automatically an abortion, and then that way they can make sure that there's no congenital issues with the next one from the aborted fetus or mass of cells. Uh, so you, you're saying basically, basically, a, a, wait, wait a minute, hold uh, on a second, my, my Phil, 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 <laughs> yeah. hold on a second, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. What you're proposing here, Patrick, is a test baby. A test baby. Yeah. You don't. You don't need to do that. Everybody wants abortions. I mean, that was part of what that march was no. back in January. Whatever. Can, can, can I? Can I say something legitimate? No, because uh, we're not but, talking legitimately oh. here. He's talking facetiously, and you're trying no, to talk I, legitimately but, about a facetious question. No, no, no. Uh, for I, because I, let me say this about uh, the testing. Uh, my first wife, my wife and I, when we first got pregnant, uh, she had a miscarriage six months in. And uh, they uh, had us come in for uh, tests, you know, because we're both Jewish and, and so forth. And they thought that maybe there was some sort of genetic thing. They were able to take fluid, ambionic fluid from her on her on a second pregnancy when uh, my oldest daughter was born. They actually took ambionic fluid they tested it. We had both had uh, DNA tests uh, performed after the, uh, the first miscarriage. And then we found out that the second baby was fine and uh, uh, through the ambionic fluid uh, test. And uh, so you don't have to abort the child to, uh, to determine whether or not... Again, I say you're trying to give a serious answer to a facetious question. No, well, uh, you yeah. know, he was partially right. You know, uh, it's... Uh, you know, but he hasn't been, you know, he hadn't been through that. I mean, I, it was a unique thing that I uh, and my first unique. wife and I went through. And the reason we know all of this stuff is because it's very difficult as you get older to keep a pregnancy. You know what they can do now? They can actually go into a female, remove a bunch of eggs, test every single egg for its potency and everything that it's got put those eggs back, go over to the guy, test all of his stuff, and put the two together, and we know we're much better off. But that's through like 20 or 30 years worth of medical work. It didn't just happen. So on, on Patrick's note, how many of you people are first born? I'm for it, Patrick. I'm sorry, Patrick, but the rest of them can go. No, was, if you're yeah. going to get rid of the firstborn, I'm good. <laughs> it's, it's not me. I, I, I wish there were a way to put it, put an X across the f people who yeah. are firstborns yeah. here. So, <laughs> la -la, bye. And Alex was Vessel? the only, only one, so you know that would have that would have ended the Schwarzman line. Yeah, I'm the only one. So. Yeah. You, you were the <laughs> See, only an only child bye. too. Patrick and I were spoiled. Okay.
<laughs> Somebody, I remember, I, I have, what is it? I, I think it was, yeah, it was girlfriend who said to me, uh, oh, you're only child, only child, only child. And I went, so what's wrong with that? And she, well, she went, was, and she couldn't come up with an answer. You know, she it's just that anybody who was, you know, had, was part of a, a, a family of, say, three, always made fun of the fact that I was an only child. Oh, how could you stand to be an only child? It was great. It was it's tough to be a middle child. Oh yeah, it's, it's tough to be a, it's tough to be the first child. Once, Only on the parents. Well, no, it's it's terrible to be the first child because the first child they they test everything on. In right. other words, they go through all the growing pains of the child and, and doing this early smothering of the child uh, and whatever. Uh, By the time uh, they get to the second one, they're a little used to it, and then the third one they dote on. Hey, the yeah. first child gets all the pictures, gets all the toys, gets all the stuff. The second child gets the shaft. Uh, you know, I was the first the child. Third I had a sister. I knew what the deal was. I got everything. And uh, and my two kids, uh, I you know, maybe I got some pictures but, but of the little say, one. But, people uh, say, don't, you, don't, one, you, don't you wish uh, you had a brother or sister? And I went, you know, only when my mother got old and ill. <laughs> you know, I wished I had one so I could have somebody to help me with it. But outside yeah. of that, I never missed uh, being uh, not having brothers or sisters. You know. Yeah. And I and I grew up to become the selfish son of a bitch that I am. So. You know, if people say that to it's you. Raining. Yeah. It's, if, if you're a little kid and people say that to you, it's because they're trying to tease you to show you exactly what it's like to be a to have a sibling. Yeah. yeah so siblings have to share. You know that that's that's one of the reasons they're like, yeah, yeah, poke, poke. Because if you had a sibling, that's all they do to you is just. You know, irritate the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, I've got that experience with two of, two of them from a previous marriage. They're, you know, thirty-one and twenty-six now. But when they were kids, they were beating the shit out of each other. And now I've got an eleven-year-old girl alone, and we kind of went through this the last couple of weeks. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I found a. Uh, her iPad is tied in with my iPad because, you know, I keep an eye on her stuff and whatnot. And I found a little note in there that says, you know, she's been into drawing lately, and it, I, I found it by accident. And it said, when you when your siblings don't live with you, you just sit and draw. And then it was like a sad face type thing. And it was, it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird to find that. Yeah. yeah. Is she And she's in school now, right? Yeah, she's in school and she's you know doing great and the whole bit. But I didn't I didn't see that it was affecting her until something like that. You know, you find something like that by accident. Do you have a dog? No, two cats. So there, she's happy uh, with that. No, no, yeah, all right. <laughs> she's not in high cats, school. Cats right? are not the same mm -hmm. as dog. Yeah, yeah but she likes them. So I want a dog. But you know that that's been kicked out of my hands for a long time. <laughs> well. uh she's is she in high school yet because i'd kind of watch that a little bit 11 I yeah i am she's she's in seventh grade yeah okay we but, just don't know, want her the, to get too isolated yeah you hear that whole thing with the you know her friends have brothers and sisters and they go over there and they they fight amongst each other but i said guess what you get to walk away from that shit <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> rent, rent some siblings for a day or two yeah 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 well she gets that, you know. She'll go over to a friend's house, and they, they were fighting back and forth the whole time. It pissed me off. Oh, you got to leave, didn't you? <laughs> it, it, is Brian going to sleep? You no. sleep. No, he has all that sugar shock. Sugar is sugar shock. Sugar shock. I love it. <laughs> See, you're not the only one, Jeff. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm yeah. okay. You're okay. Brian, you're not taking you those pills anymore. <laughs> huh? Is, uh, is Brian pre-diabetic? But it wouldn't surprise me if in 15 years I became a diabetic. Oh, you don't want to. You do something. No, I don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty sheltered. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I always knew it was totally controllable, but now that I have to deal with it, I really wish I controlled it. Hmm. Well, you can. I think you, you're probably controlling it now a bit because you're Yeah, but dieting. I can't eat anything. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know. What are you, 12? Yeah. Yeah, eating is highly overrated. Ice cream. <laughs> eating well, is highly you know, overrated. <laughs> funny know? too because I was not. I, I think I'm officially diabetic now, but because of my legs and what happened with them, with the infections and stuff, and I was, you know, pounded with so many antibiotics. They said that I've got all the 
symptoms of having diabetic, like the uh, sock and glove syndrome and all that stuff. Mm, yeah. But my sugar has never been out of whack. Oh. And they keep saying I'm diabetic. I'm not diabetic. I do, you know, it's, um, it's just in the middle. Just get the test. You know, they. they oh, I've been doing the test. I get tested every six months. Yeah. Well, every year I, you know, I go to my doctor. He does all the blood work, and I asked him finally. He said, "I just want to make sure I'm not diabetic, am I?" And he looked at the numbers, and he said, "Not even close." You know? yeah. yeah. My numbers say I'm not, but I, I can't feel my legs from my knees down. Well, yeah, but I, that, I, I, my, Alex, my feet are numb. You know, yeah, but talk it, to him about your sciatica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it has to do with it the infection. It's osteomyelitis, is what it is. Yeah. What's oh, osteomyelitis? Right. What's that? What's that? Um, it's a <clears throat> bacteria that gets into the bone marrow. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. I almost lost both, well, my left leg and almost my right one. But... Yeah, but I thought you said you had a whole lot of antibiotics. Wouldn't have that have killed something? It killed a lot of things, including my nerves and everything else. Well, I was uh, on, yeah, yeah. I was on IV antibiotics. I mean, like Drano mm -hmm. shit. Wow. Patrick, do you have any of that? Do you... Do you get those kind of antibiotics where they're just putting it through you via the IV and not pills? Um, it, the antibiotics were just for UTI for me. Okay, so that you're wow. Okay, it was a, it was a surgery that they screwed up, and they went in to fuse my ankle. It got infected, so they pulled all the hardware out. That left eleven holes in my left leg, mm -hmm. and it was infected. And they said, oh, no, that's okay, that's normal. And I finally went to another doctor and said, give me a culture. And they said, you got, you're infected. Get to the hospital. And they put a central line into my neck, and I was pumping myself with antibiotics, and I stopped. They tested me again. It came back. They stopped, tested me. I did that like four or five times. <laughs> and saved then your life. everything started going numb. I could feel a patch on my foot slowly mm -hmm. going up my leg, and it was like, Wow. They got it finally by cementing the stuff into my bone. Mm -hmm. But again, welcome to Alex's yeah, waiting room. How you doing? Welcome to Alex's <laughs> waiting room. By the way, we have some lovely magazines you can read while you're waiting. Old Who's National the Geographic. Are, they're, they're two years old, right? Yeah, they, they got, it's by <laughs> law. Uh, magazines in a waiting room have to be at least two years old. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I told Tony today that if he sent me another sticker, that there's a law on Facebook that uh, he'll be banned. Yeah. And he, he said, really? I said, yes, it's it's justice. <laughs> yeah. He keeps sending me those things. And I told him once I said, stop it. I, yeah. I, I, I just I write. Too. I just write. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I told him, I said, Facebook doesn't allow it. It's against the law. Yeah, I said, really? I said, yeah. Well, yeah, you know what it is? He, uh, uh, I, I just got through watching. They did two nights on uh, uh, superheroes decoded. It was a whole kind of almost oh, yeah. a history of American comic books. It was very good. Uh -huh. uh, but nowhere did I see Scooby-Doo, you know, and nowhere did I see the Peanuts characters. Uh, I'm sorry. Those are wimpy fucking shitty cartoons, you know. And, yeah. and um, uh, he, those are the only ones he cares about. You know, he sends me pictures of Scooby Doo and Yappy Doo and Poopy Doo or whatever the whole cartoon yeah, characters are. I, I, I want to step on those little guys. And you I, know, I hear them go, squeal. I, those were the those were the the cartoons I hated when I was younger. Yes, uh, yeah. Renee. Should have been shot Is down. anybody going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy two? Oh, oh, speaking of Marvel of, comics, of course. Of course. The, I didn't the, the, see the one. Oh, the last one was wonderful. It was, it was hilarious. Movie. Yeah, you got to watch the last one. I mean, if there are any, if there are two of these Marvel pictures to go see, one of them is Guardians of the Galaxy, because it's unlike any of the others. Uh, and the other one is, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Deadpool. Mm. Oh, yeah. Deadpool's Deadpool picture. is hilarious. Yeah. Yep. It is just, yeah, yeah. it's good it, stuff. Wasn't that a Clint Eastwood movie? No. Oh, uh, Patrick, did you just have your hand raised, or were you That's just going for a drink? Oh. No. Yeah. One of the, yeah, one of the are, Dirty yeah, Harry. Friday, yeah. so I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah. Stupid reason, but excited. Well, I, I, in fact, your girlfriend's got to get tickets for it. We, we go to the comfy chair. Well, is it a 3D one, or is it? Yeah, it's 3D. Was it filmed in 3D, or no, is it none of, in 3D? Most of these things aren't filmed in 3D. 
occasionally there's a film that's done in 3D, and and I can tell the difference. I mean, because I grew up loving 3D from the 3D we had in the 50s, which was shot with two cameras. Now what they do is they simply extract 3D out of a 2D thing. Plus, when they do all the special effects and everything, that's rendered in 3D anyway. So, you know... Um, mm. But they, they they've done some somewhere. It's so good. I I almost think that it was uh, you know 3D. So that's it ought to be fun. And they and Stanley was talking about the fact that he added other uh, characters from the Marvel franchise into this movie. Well, so. uh, he doesn't do anything. Okay, <laughs> okay. he doesn't other than do cameos. Anything. He collects a check, <laughs> yeah. does the cameos, and goes home. Yeah. Um, uh, I love Stan. I mean, Stan used to be on my radio show as a regular here in New York years ago. And I yeah. love Stan. But Stan takes credit for a lot of stuff that, you know, Stan really was just, he was the boss. Okay. And uh, so he, he was kind of like the, uh, uh, it's like the producer taking credit for everything, you know. Uh, but um, uh, I don't think he makes many of the decisions on these movies now. And uh, I'm getting a little tired of the Marvel franchise because, uh, you know, when they get to those Avengers pictures, like the last Captain America was more of an Avengers picture than a Captain America picture. And I, I just thought it was, it was bogus by the time we got to that one. Um, but uh, they've done some very the The films where they didn't care about it, you know, they didn't care about Guardians of the Galaxy. They just needed something to fill time. Turned out to be a massive hit. You know, and, and Deadpool, which was a picture they didn't even really want to make. Uh, and he, he had to fight to get it made. Uh, was a huge success for them. And basically, be, basically because Ryan it, Reynolds did a good job. Well, they didn't have to, either of them didn't have to adhere to the Marvel Universe. But now I hear they're going to have characters from, uh, from uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy show up in another Avengers movie and shit like that. And, you know, I'm getting a little tired of that stuff. They call it cross something. Well, crossover. Yeah, crossover. Uh, cross and we're about to get Shared a crossover. Universe, we're about yeah. ready to get a crossover at Netflix because they've had, you know, Nick Cage and they've had Jessica J Jones, I think it was her name. And, yeah. they, and they had uh, 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 Daredevil. Uh, and they had this, um, uh, the latest one was, uh, uh, God, I went into it. It wasn't that good. But they're going to do a thing called, I think, The Defenders in October, which is all of them together. Yeah. It's kind of like an Avengers film. So, really? Yeah. So, uh, but the stuff Netflix has been doing, they've been doing on Netflix, has been terrific for the most part. You know, uh, And I've been really enjoying it. Phil, I know you like that Sense8 thing, but has anybody else watched it? Sense8? Uh, I thought it was Sense, okay. There's only was, been one episode, and uh, I don't think uh, the one, next one season's series, come out yet. One, one, one episode one, this year. They, they had some sort of Christmas episode. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was okay. You yeah, know, it, it wasn't, wasn't as good as the first season. You know. um, although I just started watching Breaking Bad, and it took... Uh -huh. uh, I, I I like it, you know. I watched Breaking Bad as a binge. Girlfriend and I we binged on Breaking Bad, and we got we did every episode. There was like sixty three of them or something, I and we timed the last one that we watched the day before the final episode on the network. Yeah, uh, that must have been a lot of TV. Yeah, time. oh yeah, we spent a lot of time. It was a good. It's a good show. So Better Call Saul is terrific. Oh yeah. Is it uh, worth you it? know, but anyway, we we timed it so we got it just right. But the, we we binged watched that whole thing. And, and when I does when does the uh, parking attendant from Better Call Saul show up in the uh, Breaking Bad? Uh, he shows up. Uh, I can't remember. He was he works for he works for. Uh, oh, uh, I think he, he works for uh, for for the 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 Spanish guy. Uh, right. What's his name? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He, uh, the drug dealer. The chicken, yeah, he wor wor he's guy. working for the drug dealer. Yeah. Oh, 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 the black chicken guy. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Okay. Hey, listen, you hear that? That's the theme. Right. That means it's time for me to go check my temperature again. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I guess I'm not, I, if I'm here tomorrow, I'll, I'll, we'll have a show. Okay. Uh, hey, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Phil Meyer, John Rockwell, Rob Alfano, oh, bye -bye. Brian Ludwig, the wonderful Renee, Patrick, Kevin. Oh. 
Jeff pray Stein. For you. And I'm like, what? what? What'd you say? <laughs> You'll pray for me? Yeah, so that you don't die overnight from your spike in temperature. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be fighting off the temperature tonight vainly. Yes, Jeff, quickly. Take two aspirins and I'll call you in the morning. Okay, thank you very <laughs> much, Jeff. Go ice. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Okay, Goodbye. that's it. Let me, get rid of the, uh, let me get rid of the Skype so the next guys can use it. Yeah, okay. I want to get rid of it and go offline. There we go. And I want to say goodnight to the rest of you because uh, it's time to go. Uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow. Uh, Jack and Amy are next with The Intersection. It's followed closely by Connections at, uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And by the way, as I always say, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>